I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a foosball table. In case it's not obvious, I'm not in my shop. In fact, I'm in Southern California right now at Matter Hackers. Matter Hackers is the company that supplies all of my 3D printing filament and they give me support on machines. They're really awesome. They brought me out here on this trip to help them build a foosball table for their office. So we're gonna go get started building the table out of wood and then we're gonna 3D print as many of the parts as we possibly can using some of the really interesting filaments that they have here. All right, let's get to it. All of the lumber for this project came out of two sheets of three quarter inch plywood and some four by fours. I went through my cut list and drew out all of the pieces onto these sheets to make sure I was using them most efficiently. In this case, these lines aren't exactly the ones I'm going to be cutting on, but instead are there to make sure that I can get everything fit in place without wasting material. If you do plan on cutting on these lines, make sure to account for the kerf of the blade, which is typically 1 8 of an inch. I used a circular saw to break down these sheets into smaller pieces. This makes it a lot more manageable when you have a smaller table saw, and especially if you have no outfeed table. Once we got them broken down into smaller chunks, we started cutting things down to size. The lines I had drawn before were there for reference, but I made sure to measure every single cut using a straight edge or the fence of the table saw. Not every cut went end to end, and in this case, I cut it on the table saw to a point and then lifted it off the blade after the blade had been turned off. I used a circular saw to cut out the rest of that individual piece. For the most part, I used the table saw here to cut everything down to width. There were a few pieces here for the ends that needed to have multiple pieces cut at the same width, so I went ahead and did all of those while the fence was in the same place. Then I just clamped them together so they all matched up on the ends and chopped them at the same time on the miter saw. Cutting multiple pieces like this at the same time makes sure that they are exactly the same when they're cut, and if you're making a table, that's a really good thing to have. Sometimes you can't do a bunch at once, and another way to get repeatable cuts is to use a stop block like this. Before beginning to assemble this table, there were a few cuts that were just a lot easier to make with the jigsaw. So I drew out where these areas needed to be cut out using a speed square. This makes it easy to get nice straight lines that are square to each other. I used a jigsaw, which you guys know is not my favorite tool, but in this case, it works really well to cut out a section on the inside of a piece. If you can't start cutting from the edge, just drill a hole, put the blade in there, and start your cut in that position. When cutting plywood with a jigsaw, the blade is really important. There are several different types of blades for jigsaws, and if you get the right one, you won't have as much tear out on the plywood. Here's another interesting use for 3D printing in woodworking, a 3D printed pocket hole jig. You can easily find files for this online and print one out yourself, and I was surprised that it actually held up really well even without the metal bushing on the inside. We used that to make all of the holes to assemble this entire table. The first pieces to put together were the ends of the table where the goals are. I just made an L piece and set these aside until later. Then it was time to make the two side panels of the table, and these are doubled up layers of 3 quarter inch plywood. I spread on plenty of glue and then added two strips of plywood, leaving a gap in between them. This gap needs to fit the play field later on. I used scraps in between these pieces and on the ends to hold both of them in place before adding some brad nails to keep them there while the glue dried. I made the other side in the exact same way. I designed these pieces so that they're symmetrical, so there's no top or bottom or left or right side. The brads were holding these in place, so I didn't have to wait for the glue to dry to move on. I added some glue before setting the goal end in place and then tightening it down with some more pocket screws. I did this on both ends, and then I realized that I'd kind of gotten ahead of myself. It would have been much easier to drill the holes in the side walls before putting these on. Of course, I didn't realize that till after I'd gotten back from lunch and the glue had dried. So I went ahead and drew out the marks and drilled them by hand. A drill press would have been the best way to do this. That would keep the holes perpendicular to the material. Drilling them by hand did end up working out just fine. Just try to make sure that you keep the drill from leaning in any one direction. It's also really important to make sure that there's a backer board underneath this piece so you don't get blowout on the other side of the hole. We cut down a couple more scraps of plywood to make a T-brace, and this is going to go across the table underneath as a support. I wanted to make sure that the playfield didn't droop over time, and this piece would give it some support. It's also possible that the playfield wouldn't be perfectly flat, and we could use this as a way to level it. This is a simple T just using pocket holes and glue to hold it together. I attached this to one of the side panels using glue and pocket screws. The top of this piece lines up with the opening where the playfield will slot in. I added some wood glue to all of the pieces where the playfield would touch on my pre-assembled side of the table. Then I just slid in the playfield and stood the table up. 
From here, I just added some more glue on the other exposed edges and then dropped in the other side, making sure that everything slotted together and fit nicely. From the underside of the table, I pre-drilled some holes and then drove in some screws. I didn't want any visible fasteners from the outside of the table, so the rest of it was all done with glue and clamps. We flipped over the table and then added some clamps to the ends to pull them really tightly together. The center was a little bit different. If you tighten down too much on the center, it's going to warp the walls. I didn't want that. I held a measuring tape across the center and then tightened them just enough to make sure that the measurements stayed the same all the way across the table. The end panels dropped right into place as well. I used some clamps from the sides and from the top to hold this there while the glue dried. For the rods in this table, we used half inch EMT conduit. This isn't the strongest pipe in the world, but it actually worked just fine for this application. We used a cheap pipe cutter to cut these all down to length and then started marking out where the holes needed to be. To make sure that all of these holes were in line, we laid each one of the pipes up against a ruler. We laid a Sharpie down flat, ran it down the end of the pipe to make sure that we had a straight line from end to end. All of these rods are in pairs, so we did two at a time. We laid them up against the ruler and then marked where our holes needed to be drilled. We made sure that these marks crossed our center line so that we knew exactly where to drill the hole. I used a center punch and a hammer to make a small divot on each one of these marks. This gives the drill bit a place to go so that it doesn't wander when you start drilling. Anytime you drill into a pipe, you're gonna have this issue, so you always need to give the bit a place to start. The bottom side of these holes is pretty sharp, so I used a grinder to smooth it all out. While I was finishing these rods, the glue had dried on the table, so I took off the clamps and flipped it over. Now it was time to add the goals underneath. These were made from four pieces of plywood cut down and just nailed together. These are completely hidden and are really just on the inside to stop the ball from hitting the floor. I added some glue to these where they would touch the table and slid them right into place. They actually fit in perfectly. And while those were drying, I cut down the legs to fit in place. These were 4x4s that I just cut to length with the miter saw. We cut four pieces the exact same size and then painted them black with a couple of coats. After setting these in place, I used some clamps to hold them in the corner from both directions before drilling the holes through the outside panel and into the leg. It's important to note that if you drill the holes in the same position on both sides of this corner, the bolts will run into each other. So either use shorter bolts or space out the holes differently. I drove all of these in with an impact driver and then it was actually a table. It was really cool to see it in this state. The next step was to add the graphics to the field and this is something we had printed on vinyl at a local print shop. We had to trim off the end just to make it fit and then we started the process of laying this vinyl down. We were in a time crunch, so we just used vinyl. It won't last forever in this case as it gets played with, but if you want to protect it longer, you can put a clear coat over it or add a piece of plexiglass over the entire play field. We used a roller to roll this down, removing bubbles as we went, and it actually worked out pretty well. Using a small squeegee is really handy for removing bubbles, especially on the edges as well. Another hole that we forgot to drill before assembly was the ball drop. We clamped on a backing board and used a large Forstner bit to drill the hole into each side. This worked out pretty well, but there was a little bit of tear out. That's another one of those things to do at the very beginning if you can. I used a sander to go over the entire table to smooth out the surfaces and the edges. For this project, Matter Hackers printed over 140 pieces on multiple printers out of multiple materials. Some pieces were modeled from scratch and some were found online, but most of them were printed in nylon, which is especially strong. There were bearings and players and the player's feet. There were bushings and end caps and handles. There were a whole lot of pieces and it was really impressive to see how much printing they had put into this. Most of these pieces were straight off the printers, but we did add some paint to the players just to make them pop out. Of course, we did white and orange. They even printed some holders for captive nuts so that we could add leveling feet to the table. We flipped it over and found the center of each one of the feet. Then we drilled a hole with a Forstner bit just deep enough for the captive nut to sit in place. In the center of that, we did a longer one so that the post had somewhere to go. After screwing these in, the feet screwed right into the captive nut. Then it was time for final assembly, and really this was mostly about screwing on all of the 3D printed pieces. The bearings had to go in place on the outside and on the inside of all the holes. The rods had to be put in to make sure that they could turn freely. There are a lot of pieces, so this took quite a while to make sure everything was on and in its right place. After all the bearings were in place, then we figured out which rods went in which areas. Then we had to add all of the players, and that was a matter of getting the right number of players on each rod, lining them up over the holes, and driving in a bolt and a nut to hold it in place. 
The feet were attached with another captive nut and a screw coming in from the bottom. The feet are a separate piece because they're made out of a harder material that has carbon fiber in it. These will last a lot longer since they take the impact when you're playing. We added the caps and the handles using some 5 minute epoxy to hold them on. And before we put them on, we scuffed up the surface of the rods. We added the score pieces to a simple aluminum rod and then screwed that onto the top of the table. Not including the 3D printing time, this entire table was built in two days. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I think Matter Hackers is too. But the cool thing was taking it right out and letting people play it at a meetup. The guys are made out of a nylon material rather than a regular plastic that you would print with. The nylon is way stronger. In fact, this is a solid piece of the nylon filament and I can't break it. It'll bend. But the feet on the guys are actually made out of nylon X, which is rigid, so you can't even bend it. As long as those are printed correctly, they're going to last quite a long time. And if they break, you could always just print another one. As you can see behind me, Matter Hackers has all sorts of different filaments, so if you need anything like Nylon or Nylon X, these guys are the place to go. Everything else we use for this table, we got from a local home center, so all of the other stuff is really easy to find. If you wanna make your own table, I'm gonna have some plans available on my website. Those will be linked down in the description, so be sure to go check those out. Thanks to Matter Hackers for making this project possible. I hope they enjoy the table. I've got lots of other 3D printing projects and a lot of other stuff that you might be interested in. Be sure to go check those out and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.